Hey everyone, welcome to the Monversation. And as promised, I said that I would be having a guest once a month on Chit Chat Thursdays. And I have this lovely guest with me. Um, her name is Liz. And uh, since February was the month of love, I promised you that we'll talk about love. So I would like to talk to Liz um, about love. But before we get into that, remember to that I am a healing writer and coach and a poet, a published poet, and I'll let Liz introduce herself. So my name is Liz Dekwa, I'm a fashion designer, amongst many other things, and I'm also a YouTuber, and uh, what else can I say? And I'm a mother, and I love it. Being this is the month of love, um, could you tell us, um, being a mother, because um, in my opinion, I feel that when people become mothers or women, rather, mm -hmm. there is an aspect of love that happens that people say is indescribable and mm. it kind of expounds your knowledge of love being unconditional. Could you tell us a little bit about that mm. in the aspect of being a mother? Yes, that love is truly unconditional but it's not all the time that you feel loving. It's also a duty. So yeah, when I think about being a mother, yes, that love is truly unconditional. I think what it teaches you is mainly how to become a mother to the rest of the world. It gives you, it allows you to be a lot more compassionate and a lot more mindful of the rest of the world and people in general. So naturally you become kinder towards humanity. That's that's what motherhood does to you. You become more aware. Naturally, before you have children, it's all about you and the things you want in life. But once you have a child, you realize that everyone is a child. Everyone needs love and everyone, you can now kind of, you become more aware of people's pains and yeah, you're naturally a lot more compassionate and I think that's why we need more women leaders. I had to put that one there. <laughs> because we are a lot more compassionate and, and we look at the world as a whole, you know. We naturally would not solve problems with wars because we are, we are, we are feel the pain of, you know, having a child, bearing a child is painful and it connects you to the rest of humanity. So, yes, it, uh, it's the most amazing, I think, the purpose of uh, parenthood or being a mother is to connect you to the whole, to the world as a whole. Mm -hmm. So all mothers are connected to the everything, that's why you see, I see it, I know when a person is a mother, I can see it, I can see. I can see it in there, I can feel it in their energy, you see how they care, how they love, how they look at people, how they look at someone when they're hurt, they feel the pain. So mothers feel the pain of the world and they carry the burdens of the world and yeah. Uh, so when it comes to love, um, growing up, what was your understanding of love? My understanding of love? Wow, very interesting. I think uh, I think my understanding of love went had phases. It's like um, there was when you're younger and it's happy go lucky, and then when you become a teenager and then you understand a different kind of love, where you have to need love from other people, that that love that you have is not sufficient and now you need to go out there and look for somebody to love you or you need other people to love you and accept you and then when you become a grown up and then it becomes actually a struggle you know when you're entering the stage of now understanding yourself or as a young adult you feel that okay I can do this this is easy you just meet somebody that you love and then happily ever after, you know, like I read a lot of Cinderella books, so I, you know, I knew a thing or two about love and 
Prince Charming. But yeah, but as you grow, it becomes more complex because now it becomes about questioning yourself about, so what is love? Because then you start looking for it and you never find it. You do find it, but it's, it's like, you know, once you are trying to, I think because we try to hold on to it, it's like we are trying, it's not tangible, but we kind of, in our mind, conceptually, we think that it is tangible. Like it's something that you need to hold on to. It's something that I need to, to have and to hold. And so I think that's kind of the mistake. So as a grown up for me, it has become more about questioning what is love and how do I need to love instead of thinking that love is this feeling or something. So love becomes a lot more complex if you don't kind of hold on to it when you're younger. If you keep having to maybe move away from home or go somewhere else, it even becomes a risk to find love. It's like, it's risky, you never know. It's, I think that it's the question in so many people's minds, like, will I ever find love? But that now leads us back to what love is, what love really is, because it is that that you had in the beginning before you discovered that you needed to go out there and get love. So for me, love always takes me back to self-love. You know, it has taken me back to self-love because that's where I feel that I can now, you know, there is there's no, it doesn't exist on the outside of me, you know, because self-love has become my navigator. Self-love is your navigator. It helps you navigate through the world in a way that it will help you make decisions. It will help you leave toxic situations. It will help you understand what you can and cannot tolerate. So self-love has become the most important as I grow. So that is what I'm focusing on right now because it is what I'm able to extend to other people. Love is just an extension of yourself to other people. You extend the love you have in yourself to other people. So if you don't have any, and if you don't focus on building that self-confidence and self-love, then you really have nothing to give. You can't give to anybody, you can't give to your children, you can't give to other people, to a partner, or to the rest of the world if you don't have it, you know? And that takes me back to another verse, a verse in the Bible that says, love your neighbor as yourself. The key word there is not neighbor, it's actually self. It is from self that the love is coming from, that you're exp extending to your neighbor, right? So that for me now has become the most important love because once I focus on self, Focusing because self-love helps you be healthy care about your health all those things and then that You are giving from the overflow, you know you fill your cup and then you give everybody else from the overflow So that you will always have something for yourself. So self-love basically has become Has become my focus now. I'm not focusing on getting love from somewhere else or waiting for somebody to come and rescue me and love me. I am extending that love to myself. Yeah, and starting yeah. with you. Exactly. With you, starts it, with, it starts with me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's the most important thing because um, this whole month I've been talking about self-love and um, I talked about forgiveness and uh, friendship, which is also important in love and also communication. Because when it comes to love and friendship and all the things that we experience as human beings in our adult lives or whichever stage of life you are in, it involves a lot of telling yourself truths or trying to listen to your truths about what it is that you desire for yourself and that includes love. I, asked, I was asking you um, what was what what did you feel that love was when you were growing up what did you see it was because the thing is like most of our um, 
Most of the things that we know about love are things that we have seen. Because as children growing up, we watch and we see what others or people around us do. And sometimes you can substitute this functionality mm -hmm. for love when in reality it's not really what it is. Because, uh, and that's why I was asking about motherhood too, because they say that somehow that's when people get it. Mm -hmm. They understand it. Yeah. They understand what their parents were telling them, what their mm -hmm. mom, when they said that we love you so much, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And um, even I've had uh, parents tell their kids that even if you're not, you're made to your mind or to people, they might think that you're a failure, but maybe you're our failure anyway, and we, we will still love you the same. Maybe not what we expected of you, but, you know. Mm -hmm. And I find that very unconditional because um, sometimes we uh, we relate to love in a conditional way where if you didn't do this for me mm. then you do not love me when sometimes mm -hmm. some people are in a position where they they don't have the capacity to do certain things because a they were not taught mm -hmm. b it hasn't been verbalized mm -hmm. because that's why communication is very important and when um, we've been talking about love this month. It's been about love for self too mm -hmm. and that's why um, If you go to my YouTube channel, you will find um, There's a playlist of uh, my poetry. It's called conversation book and you'll find a letters to self-love so it's a poem that I actually wrote I was inspired by um, it was inspired by a friend of mine actually because mm -hmm. I felt and just a collection of women that I knew in my life who I felt were selling themselves short. Mm -hmm. So because the poem starts with um, when love is not enough, mm -hmm. you know, we the way we treat ourselves yeah. so rough, you know. Yeah. And it is so true because yeah. that is when you do not understand your worth, you don't value yourself. And now that's why the, po the poem is about, it basically talks about that. It also mm -hmm. talks about, you know, in a way some of us like are trying to lose weight mm. and we we just and then other people are giving us advice and we don't want to listen to it and then we realize that we are the problem so mm. it's a journey of a self-discovery and love and and i hope you can go check that out um at the end of this so that you can hear it um so uh let's go back to self-love a little bit um is there um something that you feel is really important like when it comes to the do you think self-care is one thing self-love yeah i think uh the the most important thing to consider it sounds very selfish naturally when you know we talk about self-love and you know because we have been conditioned and socialized to think of other people before ourselves you know and naturally as african women we are conditioned to give to give and give and give without even expecting to receive anything. So I, I wanted to, to touch on how, you know, why self-love is important. It's because it influences the way you make decisions, yeah? So the, the, the value that you have for yourself is what allows for you to understand life in general and to be, like I said earlier, to navigate through life because that's where you can know you understand when people are being toxic you understand when people are being unkind you understand when to leave a situation you understand when to stay and when you know naturally things don't change but we as women always tend to stay in a situation way too long and that's because our value naturally we put in other people you know, we naturally remove ourselves from the whole equation and now we sit on the outside of a situation and then we, we just now focus on allowing other people, you know, to, to, to let other people until other people are comfortable enough. You know, when you want to leave a situation, you always think about the other person. I want to leave when they're comfortable. So now, uh, uh, you made a very important point there, and the key word there is expectation, okay? 
So the heart center naturally, sometimes what we think is a feeling, like um, like a natural feeling connection. Sometimes it's illusions and expectations because we have been taught to build a person in our minds. Naturally, I do that personally. When I meet a person, I expect them to be exactly what I want and I expect that it's a prayer answer basically. We have to check ourselves and see is it expectation or is it heart? Mm. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, we need to know the difference between expectation and heart. So is it my heart that is telling me? Is it genuine? Is it is it this or is it my dreamy self that is going out there and you know becoming extra and and planning everything in my head because we do that a lot. So expectation is what breaks everything, is what is naturally, I heard someone once say that you broke my expectation, not my heart. Mm. You know, so sometimes... Is that a tweetable? That's a tweetable moment. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so you broke my expectation, not my heart. And it's true, I've come to think of it, and I think, why are we so disappointed, naturally, when something doesn't turn out to be what we wanted it to be? Mm -hmm. Anything, I'm not even here talking about relationships or anything. Mm -hmm. Naturally, our disappointment comes from expectations. You know, if I promise you, I'm like, I'll take you to Paris, and I tell you it's the most beautiful city, and you're gonna find so you will have expectations you will start building your own image of what Paris could be like and it might not meet your expectations so expectation is what sometimes we think is the heart is the feelings is is like oh but I'm feeling this way it's what you're building in your head we start building it's an illusion of what you think a person is or, or what you think something is so you need to try and check yourself and see, is this expectation, illusion, or is this my heart? Is this genuine? Is, it, is this a heart's desire? Because there's a difference between a heart's desire and expectations and your imagination of what you've always dreamt of. And, you know. So check yourself and see. You know. So that's where you can now draw the line, you try. You know, we need to check ourselves because we have been, uh, like now, more than ever, you know, we are exposed to what other people have, you know, and we are being told what love looks like. Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining me today and for letting me actually share Liz with you. Actually, the, the backstory of me and Liz is that we used to be flatmates back in the way desert. Back. Way back. Like, way back. And we don't want to <laughs> age ourselves, but... Um, she housed me. Yeah, so, um, so then... So then, uh, yeah, so life happened and everything, and we're kind of on the same path of living our truths. So then we thought that it would be nice to collaborate because, I mean, everything and anything is possible. So Liz is um, a fashion designer, and she is based in Helsinki. So if you ever want clothes or anything, I'll put her details down below mm -hmm. so that you can contact her, and you can go to her page either on Facebook or YouTube, but she's more active on Instagram and YouTube, so yeah. I'll check that out. And I'll, I'll leave okay. it as well. Yes, yeah, so I will put her, um, how you can find her on, on Instagram on the screen, and probably put her email address as well if you want to contact her, mm -hmm. for if you want to work with her, you know. So she is very talented. So thank you so much for joining us on Thursday's chit chat, and I hope that you have the best coming weekend. And remember to always be better, do better, and feel better, but above all else, acknowledge where you are now. Thank you. Namaste.